Howdy folks, welcome to the Scannell Agenda. My name is Stephen J. F. Scannell, which stands for Jeffrey Francis. Francis is from my confirmation days when, when I'm still a Catholic, when I took a name of a saint, and I liked St. Francis. Also, my grandfather was Francis. So this is show number 122, and today's date is January 2nd, 2020. Happy New Year. Um, I had a couple of rough shows to do. I didn't, you know, you never want to do this tough stuff, really. You'd rather not do it, but if you're ob obliged to do it, you have to do it. Nobody wants to be the cop's enemy, right? I don't want to do that. We've all got stories of how wonderful the police are. Um, I'm no different. You know, when I was a kid, I took judo at the police station. So, you know, those, those guys were wonderful guys. Uh, aside from them stealing my beer in high school, get out of here. They're okay. <laughs> um, so we all had good, we had it good in Harwich growing up, you know. We had it very good, and I do apologize. I will for the rest of my life. It may fall on deaf ears for the vehicular homicide that anyone, any cop or ambulance driver should have to show up to such an horrific murder, basically. Now, the kids in my Sunday school, I put it to them. You know, what's it closer to? Is it closer to an accident or is it closer to a murder? Closer to. And they said murder, and I agreed. And I had this program also with my kids. I did a show on it, on The Village Idiot. That'll be a system I could talk about more. Anti-tobacco, tobacco company. So this, this was a Sunday school project, and I would say to the kids, you know, we'd, I'd have them up at the blackboard doing the math on what cigarettes cost and everything else. And their book of life, you know, um, so we really get into it, and the kids would draw a cartoon, a little stick figure of a, a guy with short hair and a huge beard, and with a hat that looked like this, only it said, smartest man in the world, okay? And the hat said, you know, I had it put on there, smartest man in the world. So I said also to the kids, you know, what's closer? What's closer? Smartest man in the world or village idiot, because as the poster they would draw says, he started smoking at age 31, you know, because I tried it as a kid and I was told, don't do that, so I didn't. And then later on I started for reasons I could get into, but I won't, at age 31. Um, okay, so that was a valuable program. Talk about value accrued to the USA. But we didn't take advantage of that. And all the party hacks on Nantucket got up and spoke against it when I had this program. I, I kicked it up a notch, as Emerald would say. I kicked it up a notch, and so I brought it to the town meeting. I wanted approval for this ongoing project. It was anti-tobacco and anti-marijuana, and I was doing a very good job of that with the kids, and I could start it up again. Um, so that was among my uh, successful system designs because, of, as I've explained, number one, you design this program and get the smokers and the kids on the same page. Number two, you start a company. In this case, it was anti-tobacco, tobacco company. Number th three, you have the world buy out the tobacco interests in the world, not farming, et cetera, but these tobacco purveyors and packaging and marketing, et cetera, you buy them out. And then you continue to sell the tobacco, but you do so with number four, which is the controls. And I, could, I can't believe it, but we've, we've said okay to the vaping, you know, the vaping. You know, we're doing this all over again. It's kind of like, do we send these people to be nut jobs to Congress and the Senate? I guess so. 
because they've said, okay, to vaping, like, uh, you know, of course, what's in the vapor, it's uh, all those pleasant things that people love, like the uh, nicotine and the THC and probably who knows what else. Anyway, don't approve of that. Uh, early on, too, my systems work, which makes me valuable, and I want you to save me. Please save me. These two earlier shows indicate that maybe I'm not to be saved. Maybe I'm to be sacrificed like a scapegoat. I think Howie Carr described me as a scapegoat once because I've talked with him a few times on air about the codfish, etc. And what happened? They scapegoated him, you know. I don't know whether to agree with that or not. You know, they put me in jail. Is that a scapegoat? You know, like, I didn't ask for these pawns to be killed. It was the left wing, not the liberals, the left wing who didn't have the uh, environmental impact study in hand. They weren't even, maybe they were doing it, but I, you can't do it when you're already carrying out the killing of a salt pond which not incidentally on Martha's Vineyard, they were saying, you know, get, get out of here. We don't, wanna, we don't want our salt ponds killed too. So they were afraid on Martha's Vineyard and they said, you know, we surrender. And that's why the uh, NPR didn't cover because, you know, the vineyard didn't want to be victimized. They were told, don't worry, you're not going to be victimized. It's just these Nantucket people who favor these native rights from uh, the year 1692, 90, 93, that's when the Don Gall document was written up and signed. And, you know, it goes back even further to 1647 when the law in Massachusetts was, according to the colonial ordinances of 1647, those laws were such that in Massachusetts, you had the rights to pass and repass and go fishing and fowling, you know, in the in the ponds, the great ponds, greater than 10 acres. So Nantucket said, just a minute, you know, when that law was written, we were a part of New York, and that law does not apply here. So the agreement was written up in 1692-93, such that Nantucket retained its title rights over the ponds on Nantucket. So if you didn't know what the controversy was rooted in, it's all this tremendous history. And then the rich people show up and they kill two birds with one stone. They're controlling everything. And they want to show the Nantucketers who's boss. And this humiliated the Nantucketers severely. So they like that, you know, they want to control. You want to humiliate people. So that's what the rich people on Nantucket were doing. And they were picking and choosing the leadership for Massachusetts and for this country, too. These people on Nantucket who called Hillary, who called uh, Trump to Nantucket to answer to them. So, so much for our democracy, right? What value do we get from these people down on Nantucket running the show for everybody? They pay no taxes. Is that good for us? Does it trickle down that they pay no taxes? We don't have a health care system of any repute, do we? We're reputed to be idiots with our health care. It's a kleptocracy. So the rich people, you know, they have their little their little people who they say, you know, you wanna you want the favor. Do you want the favor, yes or no? We'll get somebody else. You know, medically, I mean, this is in the psych industry, big pharma, the psych pills and the psych people and the medical people, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you put yourself in the position to dole out the favors, pretty soon you're running the show downtown in Washington, D.C. Enter Donald Trump. Uh-uh. No, we, we didn't vote for him to be a puppet. You know, I did vote for Obama twice. I didn't like the other guys. I was picking a puppet of either nature, you know, Democrat, Republican. I never voted for a Bush. I think I voted for Ross Perot once. I think I even voted for myself once. There was no hope of Ross Perot, I forget. I'm not sure. It goes back a ways. But anyway, 
Yeah, I would have been a valuable man, probably, in politics. I'm 62 now. I could be valuable, but at this point in my life, you know, I can feel myself slipping a little bit. I'm not as sharp as I used to be 10 years ago. So, by the way, see this pile here? This pile is my recent work and it is, I took part of it, I took the top part, it's from here where you might get a tetanus shot, down to the tip of my finger I measured it and recently I measured, roughly measured my work, this is my work, I measured all of my work and it's just my work, there may be one clipping or two that I had for a reference but it's basically all my writing, not other stuff that I collected like news clippings. I'm not talking about that. So it's about eight feet of this work that I do. So you can say, well, you're a paranoid, schizophrenic. You know, this is just psychobabble. It's not work. So if I designed the uh, Paradise blimp system, then it's work. And I'm not nuts. You know, this DNA switch happened. So if I designed the market quota system, VP, value price, MQS VP, with Fred Jennings helped, then that's a good system. That's work. That's the work I do. And that's fish folk that I mentioned. These archives, you have to come up with these archives because that's the key to the DNA switch right there. Other systems that I think are pretty good are the green grid transit system. So that is very much a complex system. And you do have to be pretty sharp to design such a system. And I am pretty sharp. I know that. I mean, you can be a very sharp person and be mentally ill. I have a lot of friends who are very sharp and they are mentally ill. But I've never claimed mental illness. I would if they had a gun pointed to my head. And in a way, that's the life you lead if you're in their system, which is anathema to America, to have these sleazy, rotten shrinks. I wouldn't call them doctors in that profession and what they do, so evil. Um, they're working for uh, the money people. They're working for the, you know, the lawyers. Ugh, terrible. So the GGT system is very, very good. That comprises of inputs and outputs. I'll first of all describe the inputs could be from George's Bank. I designed it originally for George's Bank to have a lot of what I called George's Bank mega mills. So I've got those designed. That's, that is what I call first generation windmill. And the second generation windmill I call the uh, Venturi mills because it's got a scoop or a cowl that pressurize and increase the velocity of the wind. And uh, so that's second generation, that class of windmill. And then the third generation class of windmill is what I call um, a square rig or a line puller windmill, which is designed for the South Seas where the wind blows like crazy bejesus. Forgive me, I'm going to the bottom. You know, it sent so many people down to the bottom in sailboats in the old days. They'd try to go around Cape Horn. No way. God put them down to the bottom. Very scary weather. Very scary weather. And so that is a system of flywheel pullers and the flywheels then generate either electricity or they generate compressed air by what I call a conveyor belt that brings the air, the surface air, down to depth. And it can do that in, in uh, three or four or five or, you know, sessions where it, it pulls and then, you know, you have a certain amount of pressurized air waiting. Now, if that's crazy to do that, then I'm crazy. But that stuff, all of it together, that plugs into the green grid transit system. So I started out designing these windmills 
And I said, as I was sitting in the taxi line on Nantucket, I came back to Nantucket and said, I'm not crazy, I'm running for selectmen, this is what they've done. And then there were certain people that said, don't come to us with your personal problems. You know, if you have issues and personal problems, this is how they were on Nantucket. They were totally taken over on Nantucket by the rich people, you know. Any good people out there, well, like on Cape Cod right now, any good people aren't working with me. Scott Lively, I would have loved it to have seen him get in because he's a good man, unlike Baker. And the Democrats don't need a candidate because the Democrats and the Republicans are both birds of the same feather with this oligarchy. They just need to have us all believe that when we all get along, isn't that wonderful? Baker did this speech. I was like, this is like 1984 all over again. Everyone's getting along. Everyone's getting along. In politics, isn't that wonderful? You better raise the red flag, you know. And uh, Trump knows all this. He hates Massachusetts. I think Trump hates Massachusetts. Massachusetts, for good reason, too, it's evil. Massachusetts is bad. We are the centerpiece of this oligarchy machine. So. Now, the green grid is what the offshore windmills plug into, first generation, second generation. I don't think we're going to get around to doing the third generation before we play around with the first two generations. And I say, go ahead, you're ready. Go ahead to that third generation line puller um, or square rig. So if you can picture the wind blowing 40 to 60, steady 40 to 60 for a number of days, they had these gales and this would put, put the men down to the bottom and basically smash apart the boat. And they couldn't get around Cape Horn because of this. It's like going into a hell. Anyway, not that I know. The only waves I've seen, the biggest waves I've seen are like 25 feet, 20, 25 feet. But, you know, we were in smaller boats too. Anyway, the fishery system is for the world. You know, this whole fishery system that, that I did on me and Fred Jennings who had credibility. And Greenpeace paid Fred Jennings and then they turned on their heel and walked away. Greenpeace. They wouldn't sign up with the right system for the world, local fisheries, federal fisheries, and international fisheries. The sea farm system, market quota system, is what we all want because we want fish, right? We want the fish. We, you know, maybe we also want to be the friend of the fishermen, right? Oh, you know, I love you guys. You want that, right? Well, Cape Cod Times, They've always been the friend of the fishermen, but they're not the friend to the fish because they have sided with this gobbledygook about special people having these rights to fish and equal opportunity out the window, right? It goes over the side. And was it uh, Stossel? What's his name? John Stossel did a report, and I can't think of it, but there's an acronym for that, and it's about writing regulations that ask the new, the new entrant into an industry, I think it was the ambulance industry, is it okay if these new people come in and have an ambulance business? And of course, you know, if you're protected, if you're a protected monopoly, you say you write all the letters. No, it wouldn't be good for the industry, and that's what the fishermen did. They, they put it on the people, you gotta love us and our industry and the industry needs you to get behind these fishermen and be their friend. Well, with my system, market quota system, value price, the VP, which Fred came up with, Fred Jennings, Harvard economist, now that is putting a price on habitat destruction. Now where are you liberals? Where are you? And I'll tell you where you are. I know where you are. You're squirrely people. And you didn't like this pawn thing at all. You didn't like being called out for the environmental destruction on Nantucket. And when Mike Dukakis was running for president, it never came out. 
this issue never came out. So the both parties in Massachusetts and the fake news media, back then it existed and they didn't want it to go public. And even though it was in Yankee Magazine, you know, it really never really went too public. You know, when I was a kid growing up in Howard, Dad said, should we move to Nantucket? I said, yes. I think Beinecke offered him a job. They also offered my dad work with the new um, Cape Cod Mall. My dad was really bright. You know, he was a planner. He was the uh, chairman of the planning board, chairman of the conservation board. I think definitely he was chairman. Later on, he was chairman of the board of water commissioners. And... Uh, I'm thinking about corruption in, in that department. My sponsor, which I mentioned, I got the name Francis, this guy was the superintendent and I guess he ran off with some money or embezzlement. And he worked at the church too. So the devil can work in people and that's why we have to eliminate bad thoughts. That's what the nuns always taught and I believe that if you're having bad thoughts about doing something bad, try to get them out of your head, you know. So I think I was doing the right thing by going down to dig at Sacred Japan, but I think now they describe that as illegal. Well, when you have two departments, President Trump, one of them being the Division of Marine Fisheries, and they know the herring fishery, and they know this is a herring run, that these ponds get opened and that's you're opening up the herring run, so the herring can go, go, come and go. You open it twice a year. So they come in, they go out. And the Division of Marine Fisheries was saying, like, yeah, it's legal, and by the way, you know, you really should be opening these ponds, like over on the vineyard, and this is, this is the nutty left-wing leftist mentality, really. They're crazy people, and so they have uh, an axe to grind, as I do too. Put us in the same room, and, you know, it wouldn't be good. Um, only because... You know, the law is what it is, and you have to work within the framework of the law. And what I was doing was working within the framework of the law in that we were developing, with the state's approval and me in approval, of running a test case on this issue, okay? And so that was being formed, and then because that was being formed, the Nantucket Selectmen ordered Sacagawea and all the other ponds to be opened against the order against you know, the Massachusetts DEQE, you know, weirdos, left-wing people who wanted these ponds to be freshwater ponds and then life will be beautiful. These are real whack jobs, left-wing people here in Massachusetts that Baker represents these people. That's why I don't like him. He represents these whack job left-wing people and he is in no way a Republican. We don't have a party system on, in Massachusetts. We have oligarchy oligarchy okay so the selectmen ordered the ponds open and they asked for volunteer help I went with my shovel uh, a couple of people went with their heavy equipment state police said get off this beach it's private property state police said it's private property they didn't say you're violating the wetlands regulations that say you can't open a pond because they didn't want to go there. Of course you could open a pond. Martha's Vineyard is opening their ponds. Why can't we open our ponds? The nut jobs said no. And the nut jobs in Massachusetts get their way. If they have their way with America, the world will end, essentially. These people are nuts. They'll do all kinds of crazy things. And they're even responsible for the LGBTQ plus putting in a gay man dressed as a woman who is a pedophile who is reading a book to little children. That's where we've gotten off the tracks, I would say. And I said on one of the other shows, did, did the nuns need to bring in a gay man dressed as a woman to uh, read to us? Why not? <laughs> Why not? These kids, are they asking for this kind of thing? I don't think so. I saw one of the clips and the pictures and one of these kids was like catatonic, you know, they're so freaked out by that. You know, getting sexual with little children of a, you know, topics of a sexual nature. You know, leave them alone. Let them be androgynous like they should be. You know, that's later on, okay? Hello? These people are crazy.
here in Massachusetts, they take the cake. Um, that's why Republicans and Democrats ganged up on Scott Lively. Scott Lively, such a good guy. So capable, too. You'll have to see the interview that my wife and I did with Scott Lively. So capable. Such a capable man. And very capable. I think uh, Trump should hire him. I really do. And get to know him. Um, and I would ask a favor of Trump that he hire uh, Scott Lively after they find out, immediately after they find out that, yes, there was a DNA switch and the FBI was involved and they covered up murders, etc. As soon as that happens, I would ask President Trump a favor. Hire Scott Lively because he's pretty darn good on a lot of different issues. And I interviewed him one-on-one -on -one with my wife there. And I can attest to his qualities. Uh, so he was the hater. So that's one of those things that I said, okay, if he's the hater, I want to be in company with him. If Scott Lively is the bad guy, the hater, then count me in. I'm the hater. I hate everybody, you know, in one sense. I want to get into that issue. I don't, I don't have that as one of my main projects, but sociologically speaking, you know, uh, I want to get into that. And by the way, in jail, it was my second time in, and I deserved to be in for the vehicular homicide, so I was okay, you know, in a way. There was this guy. He was a black guy. Not that it matters, but he was, uh, he was saying, Oh, he's a hater, he's a hater. And I was saying, what are you saying? Like, he's hater, you know, hater, is that it? I just, uh, that was my first experience. This guy was a guy who, who would not cooperate and get a trial even. He fired every lawyer. The, the guards know who I'm talking about if they hear this. Fired every lawyer, so he stayed in the wing that was like for the non-convicted. He didn't want to wear a blue suit. He was happy to wear the orange suit. Every single week he had a new lawyer and he fired him. And he muttered like, oh, he's a hater. He's a, but he was a genius. He could play chess and everything else. So these people aren't dumb, but they have a way, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I'm valuable. And the value to the United States and to the world is big with the green grid T, with the market quota system, with the paradise blimp system. It's big. Please use me and get this DNA test done. Thank you for watching the Scannell Agenda.